It's Monday, August 31st, 2009. Thanks for clicking on the Morning Swim Show. I'm your host, Peter Bush. I hope you had a great weekend. Last Thursday and Friday, we brought you a couple of interviews with two great Masters open water swimmers, Alex Costage and Ted Robinson. If you didn't catch them, you can always go to our archives at swimmingworld.com. Well, we're going to focus on open water swimming for one more day, and I promise it's worth it. Both of our guests today have great stories to tell, and they both tell them very well in completely different ways. Up first is Fran Crippen, who competed in his first World Championships last month and left with a bronze medal in the 10K, despite coming to a complete stop just about 50 meters from the finish line. And then we'll talk to Stuart Goosens, who just became the youngest American to swim across the Strait of Gibraltar. Before we get to them, we do have some news for you. The Associated Press is reporting that Olympic champion Dawn Frazier is still one tough cookie. Over the weekend, she fought off a burglar in her home in Australia. Frazier, who's 71 years old, said the thief threatened her life and she, quote, got really annoyed about that and just grabbed him by the ear and the hair. Frazier and a friend were then able to subdue the thief until police arrived. Three weeks from today, Natalie Coughlin begins her stint on the hit American TV show Dancing with the Stars. Here's a photo of Coughlin with her dancing partner Alec Mazzo. Coughlin's the first American swimmer to compete on the show, but not the first swimmer to step on the floor. In the show's many international versions, Olympic champion Daniel Loder danced in the New Zealand version in 2006, finishing third. And you might remember our interview last year with British swimmer Mark Foster. After his run on the original show, Strictly Come Dancing, he finished in 10th place. Over in Denmark, Thomas Lures extended his unbeaten streak in the 10K open water swims that was at the sixth stop on the FINA World Cup Tour. Lures was the, uh, won the latest event by just three seconds over open water swimming legend Peter Stoichev of Bulgaria. And on the women's side, Pollyanna Okamoto of Brazil just edged out her teammate Ana Cunha by 12 seconds. You can find recaps of all six stops on the World Cup Tour. Just go to our website, swimmingworld.com. All right, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll visit with Fran Crippen. Sunshine sky, and there's a reason why I'm feeling so high. Must be the season. You get more power and more space. The world gets fewer smog forming emissions. The third generation Prius, it's harmony between man, nature, and machine. And welcome back to the show. It's time to bring on open water star Fran Crippen. He's on Skype right now from his home in Philadelphia. Fran, welcome back to the show. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me back. So your race in Rome has become quite the talker, especially because of that finish. Describe what happened. Um, well, I was um, approaching the finish, and I was about three, 400 meters away, and um, I took an inside line. And uh, I was headed directly towards the finish chute, which is marked by two yellow buoys. And uh, I didn't want to sight. I didn't want to look up because it just slows you down. And I, I saw Thomas Lurs, uh, the German who had won the 5K. He was off to my right. So if I just bre uh, kept breathing to my right, I would be able to see him. And I figured I'd just use him as a guide to get into the, the finish chute area, which is uh, 50 meters from the, uh, the touch pad. So I'm swimming along, and uh, I was feeling real good, and I knew I had a great shot to win. And all of a sudden, I just went head first into this buoy. And um, I came to a complete stop, and my momentum carried me under. And I popped up, and um, it shoots in this way, and I was on the left side of the lane line. So I said a couple of curse words, and I dove under the lane line. And um, I was probably now in about fourth or fifth place, and I sprinted in, and I probably made my last 50 meters even faster than it would be because I had such an adrenaline rush, and I was just on such a high. Uh, and I was able to sprint past uh, a couple guys, one of the Italian swimmers, and uh, grab the bronze medal. And um, it 
I mean, there was a big protest, but I didn't break any rules. I mean, I just hurt myself because I'm an idiot, but um, it worked out fine. And um, uh, the FINA board ruled in my favor, which um, we were very happy and very relieved about. And um, so it was, a, it was a great experience. I mean, I had a great race, and I was just really just happy with how I raced. And even if um, even if they would have the protest would have been upheld and I would have been disqualified, I would have been extremely disappointed. But I also would have, you know, taken solace in the fact that I raced really well and I raced better than I ever have in my life. And I was really just happy about that. But Thomas Lures, he was on the show a couple weeks ago. And he told us that you would have beat him and won the gold medal had you not hit the buoy. As that's nice of him to say. It would have it would have been very close. It would have been um, it would have came down to the touch. Uh, I was feeling great, and I mean, who knows? I mean, I, I don't know if I would have won. I mean, I all I know is that I hit the buoy and I ended up third. And so, I mean, he is world champion, best open water swimmer in the world right now. And um, I'm looking forward this weekend to race him in, up in New York. And uh, hopefully I'm going to try not to hit any buoys. I'm not going to promise because it could happen again. But, um, I mean, we'll see. It's going to be a lot of fun, though. So you said your race in Rome was your best race strategy yet. I mean, what does that mean? When you're talking about a 10K, what is good racing? Yeah, I mean, I've made, I've done 10Ks and I've made huge mistakes before. Um, and I have paid the price at the end for just swimming stupid and just swimming with a bad race strategy and going too hard and using my energy in times where I needed to conserve energy. And um, I've learned a lot, and I was able to use what I've learned to my advantage in Rome. And, um, and I think that that's the exciting part about for me about open water swimming is I continue to learn and I continue to get better at it as you know, as I get older and as I get more experienced. Well, you'll have a rematch with Thomas Lures this weekend, the big race around New York City, like you said, on Labor Day weekend here in the U.S. Uh, yeah. Describe what that race is like. I, I mean, I couldn't tell you because it's the first time I've ever had it. So, but I how mean, do you I, envision it? I envision it as. Uh, it, it being a great race, a lot of great competitors. Uh, David Davies is going to be there. Uh, he was silver medalist at the Olympics last year. Uh, Lurz was a bronze medal, and but um, Davies didn't race open water this summer. He just raced in the pool. Um, he's a great swimmer, and I know it's going to come down to who has the best the best race strategy and who conserves their energy and has the best kick at the end. Uh, I feel like I have maybe a tiny bit of an advantage because I live so close to New York and I don't have to travel. And also, I haven't been racing in the past couple of weeks. I've just been preparing and training and getting ready. And um, I think I can use those things to my advantage this weekend. And if all goes well, I, you know, I expect myself to be there at the end battling with those guys who, who are the best in the world. Now, I don't want to bag on New York. I love the city, but the water I'll is, bag on New York. The, the water is not the cleanest. I mean, how do you mentally prepare or perhaps medically prepare for that race? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't worry. I'm not going to worry about the water. Um, you know, I don't worry about how clean it is or how dirty it is. I mean, I'm going to go and I'm going to race, you know. Um, I mean, I... I live like 10 minutes from a river here. We take our boat out there, and the river here in Philly is pretty dirty too, you know? And, uh, I mean, it's fine. It doesn't really bother me too much. I mean, I'm hoping that I don't get sick, but if I come out first and I end up getting sick, I'll still take it, you know? If I get like fourth or fifth or sixth and I end up being sick at the end, I'll probably be pretty pissed, but um, I think it'll be fine. Just don't swallow too much during the race. I'm going to try not to. Fran, thanks a lot, buddy, and uh, good luck this weekend. Hey, thanks so much for having me. All right, have a good one. All right, that's Fran Crippen joining us from Philadelphia. We'll take another quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk to a teenage swimmer who just swam the Strait of Gibraltar. That's coming up right, right after this break. Oh, man, 12. Dwight. Dwight Howard. Man of steel. He's a man down. You can't throw you can't post them. More dunks than a donut shop. First team all galaxy. Ah. The drop step. The spin move. The smash. The smile. Cheese. Are you kidding me? Sick. 
flat out nasty. Filthy, vicious, ridiculous. But you know your boy gets his vitamins. The boy definitely gets his vitamins. And welcome back to the show. Just a couple weeks ago, Stuart Goosens dove into the chilly waters off the coast of Spain and headed toward the North African coast. Four hours later, he touched dry land, became the youngest American to swim across the Strait of Gibraltar. Goosens is back in his hometown of San Francisco, and he joins us now between classes at St. Ignatius College Prep. Stuart, how you doing? I'm yeah, pretty good. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. So... When you do that swim, do you got to bring a passport with you? How does that work? <laughs> uh, no, we, uh, the uh, Raphael, um, he runs the whole association. Uh, he takes care of the logistics. But uh, we were coming into the coast, actually, and uh, we got buzzed by a Moroccan Navy gunship. And uh, they kind of circled us a few times. And... Uh, then when they when they saw I was in the water, they kind of chilled out. But it was kind of it was a little uh, it was a bit of racy for a bit. That is the first open water interview we've ever done where somebody got buzzed by a gunship. Okay, <laughs> we're off to a good start here. Uh, anything I, else exciting happened during the uh, the four mile swim or four hour swim? Uh, no, I mean it was. Uh, other than that, it was it was really kind of it went it was way it was you know, it was really calm. Um, but uh, they, you know, when you're cutting across the strait, uh, you're basically weaving through shipping lanes. Um, so you know you'll be, you know, it'll just be open, open seas and stuff. And then the next thing you know, there's you know, thirty ton tanker that's you know, half a mile ahead of you and just giving you five, ten foot waves. Um, but I mean, it's, it's all around. It's a nice swim, um, but it's. Uh, other than the gunboat incidents, it was uh, it was pretty calm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, gunboats check, uh, shipping, uh, dodging shipping containers check. Uh, hey, you want to throw in a shark attack for good measure? No, I just I saw some little uh, some little fishes at the beginning, but that was it. Very cool. What uh, what inspired you to do this specific open water swim? Um. I don't know. I I I swam Alcatraz, uh, the Alcatraz swim when I was about, uh, I think I was fourteen when I did it, and uh, after that I was kind of I just was really sort of thinking about things I could do, places I could swim between, and um, my dad has this collection of maps um, from like National Geographic, and uh, I was in my room one day, and I was looking at uh, these maps, and all of a sudden. I said, you know, oh, what's that? And my dad said, it's the Strait of Gibraltar. Um, and I, I kept thinking about it. And uh, so basically ever since I was 14, I've been thinking about doing this. Um, and I guess you could all trace it back to just looking at a map. <laughs> now, I know any open water swim requires some preparation, but especially when you're going overseas to countries, you know, like Spain and Morocco crossing continents, uh, crossing, you know, a major shipping lane. I mean, did it take some major coordination to to make this doable? Oh yeah, I'm, we. Uh, it was about it was about five or six months of just planning, um, and then even when we got there, one of the big things about open water swimming is, um, you know, it's not like in pool swimming where, you know, your race is at ten thirty, and you know it's going to be this long. The problem is is when it's an open water swim, you go there. And uh, we had planned to stay in Tarifa, um, it's this little surfer town that you start. Uh, we were planning to stay in Tarifa for about a week, um, maybe just a bit over a week. Um, because when you go there, you have no idea what day you're going to swim. You could go there Monday, you could swim Tuesday, or you could go there Monday and swim Sunday. Uh, we went there Monday. Um, and I was, I thought I was going to swim on Tuesday, so I was really pumped. So we go in there Monday afternoon and check with Raphael. And uh, then the next thing we know, he's telling us that the weather's been bad for the past two weeks. And he says, we might have an opening next Tuesday. But the problem was is that we were only here till Monday. 
so we were really kind of I, well, I was scared but uh, I was thinking I wasn't going to get to swim um, but luckily uh, weather cleared up and uh, I got to go on Thursday um, so I mean it's, it's an experience uh, the planning in and of itself it's you can train all you want but in the end you know it's completely out of your control the unexpected adventure Ooh. of open water swimming while well, I hear the <laughs> phone ringing in your high school office I know you gotta get back to class uh, what class is next uh, environmental science well that's an important one so we'll let you get to it Stuart thank you so much for joining us thanks a lot alright that's Stuart Goosens joining us from his high school in the San Francisco area to swim the Strait of Gibraltar good for him well, that's our show for today. Hope you enjoyed all this open water talk. We will be back tomorrow. Until then, I'm your host, Peter Bush, reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.